For this presentation, I will be looking into the ethical implications behind parental decision making with regard to healthcare. So what is parental decision making? Because children are often too young to be considered autonomous and therefore are not permitted to give informed consent for medical decisions, the parents often act as surrogates or uh, um, yeah, surrogates and make decisions for the children because they can't uh, make their own decisions. Both physicians and parents want the best for their sick children, but sometimes uh, a parent's beliefs may interact negatively with what is medically best for a child or what the physician would believe is best for the child. This is often referred to as medical neglect if the child um, does not, if the child's being harmed by the parent's decision to not uh, agree with the physician, it's referred to as medical neglect, and it can result in the child being taken away by social services. The four major principles of biomedical ethics are a respect for autonomy, justice, um, non-maleficence, and beneficence. Respect for autonomy um, refers to each person's individual rights to make their own decision and be self-governing. Uh, Non-maleficence is the principle that to do no harm, to not hurt people. Um, Beneficence is the principle of doing good or helping, um, doing what's best for someone. And justice is the principle regarding equality and fairness and treatment of people. When parents disagree with physicians in, in regard to treatment, it can be due to many different things, but the most popular or the most common uh, reasons for this are religious beliefs, um, where a lot of religions may interact negatively with uh, medical treatments. Uh, another reason is misinformation, where a parent just is not correctly informed on uh, treatment of some illness, and the belief that the end result of treatment causes more problems than the original issue, where a good example of this is where people will say, oh, I'm not going to vaccinate my children. The side effects are way worse than the disease itself that they would get. Um, and religion is one of the biggest issues. Uh, it often will prevent children from getting the proper treatment they need. And a good example of this is with Adam Lovell, a two and a half year old child who was brought into the hospital with uh, showing signs of meningo meningococcemia, which is a bacterial infection caused by the same bacteria that causes meningitis. Um, the parents ref did not want to treat him so he, as the infection progressed, he got these purple splotches you see here, and he, um, he eventually developed dry gangrene on his hands and feet and needed uh, debridement and am amputations as soon as possible. His parents, however, were devout Christians and they believed in miracles due to what they'd read in the Bible, and they would um, have hospital clergymen come in and talk to them and read them Bible verses about miracles and they were like, well, don't, um, we don't want you to amputate his fingers and toes even though they, it was just dead tissue at this point. They said they didn't want to have them amputated just because uh, they believed that they would grow back if they trusted them long enough. So they, um, they left him alone for a couple weeks. They, they would treat him, give him pain medication and do whatever they could to make him feel comfortable without amputating and debriding his uh, fingers and toes as per the, as the parents requested. Um, so eventually he showed signs of infection where he had a higher white blood, count, white blood cell count and um, he had a fever. So the parents eventually, after I think it was about four and a half weeks, they eventually had to agree to surgery to prevent him from dying. And 
they actually also were confronted by social services saying that they would take him away if they didn't agree to uh, medical treatment. And they said, the only way he will be taken away from us is by death, so we will. Um, so they agreed to the treatment. Jehovah's Witnesses are another example of when religion can interact with medical treatment negatively, where they refuse um, blood transfusions because it's whatever their the Book of Mormon tells them to do. It's not their they believe blood is uh, it blocks your entryway to heaven or something, and they're very commonly examined with regard to patient autonomy because they will often. Um, refuse, even if it's not a life-threatening problem, they just need a blood transfusion and they'll be, they'd be fine, they would still uh, refuse it and they might die. And this happens a lot with their children too. Vaccinations are also a huge problem regarding um, parental decision-making. Decision because uh, especially in recent years, many parents have been refusing to vaccinate their children. Um, uh, even well, with last year's flu season, uh, 80 to 85% of infants that died from the flu hadn't been uh, vaccinated. So this is a chart of the United States mortality rates with regard to different illnesses. And as you can see, with the development of different vaccines, the deaths per 100,000 um, people went down significantly. And yet people will still refuse to vaccinate their children because they believe that um, the vaccinations cause different problems. Like some people believe it causes autism, even though it's been proven that it doesn't. And they'll say, oh, well, there's mercury in them, even though they've... It, taken out the mercury and it wasn't even the type of mercury the bioaccumulates like the one in fish does but some parents will just be this is an example of misinformation they just will read one article and then not actually do research on it um euthanasia of terminally ill children is not usually heard of there is an example just two years ago about this girl named Jerica Bolin who had type two spinal muscular atrophy. And she said her pain level on a daily basis on a good day would be seven out of 10. She was just in so much pain all the time. And she was 14 years old and she decided that she didn't want to go on living. She wanted to be, uh, she wanted to have physician assisted suicide. She wanted to have essentially no more treatment and just be allowed to die. And her mom found a way to be all right with that, even though it was painful for her. So they threw her a party, and then she eventually died after a couple months because she didn't have any treatment. But this is usually not heard of in the medical community just because um, children do not, they're not given uh, the same amount of freedom as an adult would be. And even so, with an adult, there, there needs to be certain criteria need to be met for them to be able to refuse life-saving treatment. And remarks. So parental decision-making in healthcare is usually smooth. It usually goes smoothly. Parents will usually agree with physicians and do what they and the physicians think is best for the child. Beneficence and non-maleficence are almost never overlooked by physician or parent. But when it is, when one of the um, one of the principles is overlooked. Uh, it's very unfortunate, but it's usually understandable from certain points of view, like from religious points of view. It makes sense if you look at the parents' beliefs, that then you understand why they're doing what they're doing, even if it puts the child at risk. Which is unfortunate, but it still happens. The end. Thank you.